Hello and welcome to Chit Chat and All That with me, Amanda Prowse. And me, Penny Domit. Thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of chatter. We'll be talking about all the things that we usually discuss around the kitchen table. And how happy we are that you're taking a virtual seat at our table and coming along for the rather random ride. So yes, give us a like, press the subscribe and follow key. Penny, that was perfect! I know, it was good, wasn't it? Oh, Penny, hang on, I'm just going to... Thank you, thank you. That was good. Thank you. Uh, Pull up a chair. Get the kettle on. And welcome. I'm sorry, I was momentarily distracted because I have two dogs. I, honestly, they say don't work with animals and children. These two today, I don't know what it is, but they're being very noisy and very, very clattery. Yes. So I do apologise. Maybe Marvellous Mason, the producer, can take out some of their snoring. And, and I just want everybody to know that it's not us making those noises. <laughs> Pen, if it was us making those noises, I'd have you straight up that vet quicker than you could say... Yeah. Pass the thermometer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, it's not a good thought. But no, we've been absolutely overwhelmed by so many lovely messages from our listeners and lovely reviews and people saying they're telling their friends, which, of course, is how we grow and how we spread the word that Chitter Chatter is so good for your soul. It definitely is good for your soul. I have an update for you, Pen. So oh, I know, yes. I know a couple of weeks ago we spoke about my shouting out in the middle of the night. Oh, yes, and my constant giggling. Exactly. Um, they kind of went hand in hand. And yet Simeon reminded me, and I'd totally forgotten about this. We'd been married for about, oh, I suppose, three or four years. And one night I did my usual shouting out. And I shouted out, there's a man in the room. So Simeon wakes up, jumps out of bed, grabs whatever weapon is to hand. I'm thinking a slipper. A box of tissues, a book, although he does read quite weighty books, so it might have been quite, you know, you want all that funked around your head. And I shout, he said, I then open my eyes and I say, what's going on? And Simeon says, there's a man in the room. So I start screaming. <laughs> so, so I'm screaming, he's running around the bed with said weapon, and we're both literally just looking for this man that doesn't exist in the dark. <laughs> crashing around and eventually I sort of realised and he sort of realised we had that we were up for an hour I tell you what heart racing <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> terrible so I'm, I'm aware of it but uh, yeah that wasn't a good night oh no I mean I, I, I find this fascinating <laughs> that you are so coherent when you shout in oh, the night it's very coherent and very as I've said I think very instructional So literally, like, bring me the cheese or the plank is broken. It's always something quite definitive. You don't, it's not like a mumble. And it's not like you wake up in the morning going, oh, I had this dream about building a shed and the plank was broken. No, I have no recollection of it at all. But sometimes I wake myself up just after I've done it and think, oh, I wonder what that was about. You know, you sort of turn over in your night. I only wake myself up snoring. Yeah, and the other. Yeah. (laughs) We know all about that. So, Pen, what should we be doing in the garden at the moment? Always lots of weeding, Mm -hmm. but at the moment the roses are starting. Mm. They are incredible. Do you just leave them to do their thing? Um, You need to prune them. We prune at the end of the year, so we uh, do the formative pruning at January time, but we also cut them back in September to take a bit of the height off them. I'm nervous to prune them because I think I I shouldn't touch them. Oh, no. Roses do really well for pruning. Um, They they always used to say, oh, you can't kill a rose. Uh, And it's sort of true in that they enjoy a really good prune, but you have to make sure you do it at the right time of year. Mm. Uh, So at this time of year, your, your, your roses are just starting to flower really important to keep deadheading them what does that mean that means when the flowers when the flowers penny's being attacked by a french bulldog i'm just i'm I'm sitting here in admiration of your professionalism i was trying to carry on you've got a dog a small dog attached to my waist climbing up your person and you're going that's when you have to pull on the roses and the dogs are like all over you oh i'm so sorry simeon could you call the puppies because we're actually trying to work Get off! Come on! Oh, sorry, Penny. I think they've gone. They're going. Right, wonderful. Carry on, Mello. So they sort of say you can't kill a rose. Um, but Have you tried? <laughs> Occasionally. I, I do always say use a good quality rose in the first place. Mm. I always buy David Austin roses. How do you know it's a good quality rose? Um, David Austin have been breeding and growing roses for a long, long time. 
Um, they are beautifully bred roses, good quality. Uh, they always arrive so beautifully packaged if you buy them direct from them. Um, but you know you're starting off with a good rose. So start off with a good rose. Make sure you plant it properly. So use this amazing stuff called Root Grow, which is a natural mycorrhizal fungi. Fungus helps things grow, Who knew? weirdly. Yeah. Um, helps create good roots. So plant it properly. Uh, lots of information on the David Austin website. Um, or you can just message me and I'll give you lots of information. Absolutely. Um, I have a question. Yes. How long does a rose last then? I was given a rose on my 21st birthday. A couple of years ago then. <laughs> called Penelope. Oh. It's, they make wonderful gifts. I was about to say why. Yes. Obviously that's your name. Yes, exactly. Uh, they make wonderful gifts. I don't think there's an Amanda actually. There should be. Oh, there will be. I don't think there is. There must be. Um, poet's wife. I am no, a poet's quite. wife. Yes, that'll there you do. Go. I'll have that one. There yeah. you go. Um, you can always find a rose that's relevant for the person you're giving it to, is all I can love say. That. That's great. Um, that would be one of my things I would love to have a rose named after me. You have, you've got Penelope. Yes, but it's not. There's a Penny Lane as well, actually. Oh. There's a Penny Lane. Uh, there's so many that I love. But anyway, so you want to find. Sorry, another question. Carry on. Can you get a rose named after you then? You can. You can get a rose named after you. Um, I'm not sure which which um, rose grower does it, but I know you can actually have a rose that is bred specifically for you. What an amazing gift. Isn't that amazing? And I'm thinking, and I know this is ridiculous, but when someone's passed away... Yes. Wouldn't that be incredible to have I, their rose? And I have do that... know somebody that has done that. I love and it's it. it's very, very precious. Uh, they did ask me to prune it, oh. which made me feel very very responsible yeah um but how wonderful how wonderful to have that it i mean really i think is. it's lovely so you've bought your rose you've planted it correctly then hopefully from about the beginning of june you will have lots and lots of flowers arrive on this rose as the flowers fade you need to take those heads off. So when they go a bit brown and droopy? When they go brown and droopy. Crispy. You, you want the rose to be continually producing flowers because they repeat flower. So we're going to make sure we take those dead heads off. Um, I quite often put a little bit of an instruction on my Instagram page, at Penny Domit. You can see how you prune dead head your roses. Do you ever make perfume with those petals? <laughs> when I was when I was seven, I did in a yes. bowl. Oh, when they used to go all oh, slimy. Oh. Um, there is nothing like an armful of roses. Mm. Uh, for me, that's my favourite favourite flower. Mm. Um, and the English ones, especially, uh, are bred for fragrance, mm. and they have five different types of fragrance. I'm going to get very boring now. Do you mean uh, get very boring? <laughs> yeah. I've become very boring. <laughs> um, there's tea, there's myrrh, there's old rose fragrance. Mm. Uh, there's other fragrances. There's one called Woolerton Old Hall that has... <laughs> yes, I know. I you're going to say them. So, Woolerton Old Hall that has a myrrh fragrance and it sort of smells like licorice. Oh, I love a bit of licorice. You? Or if you don't want to go to the trouble of doing all that, just open a packet of all sorts and have a sniff. <laughs> It's cheap, but <laughs> how wonderful to have that. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. I know you love your roses. I do. Once I get enough of them, you will be getting armfuls, I promise you. Penny, you are the best friend, honestly. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. So don't worry about your roses. No. Just make sure you deadhead them. I think I'm too worried. I think I'm being too precious, maybe. Totally. And then in the autumn, we will do a little bit of pruning mm. and you'll see how easy it is. Um, I know for a fact, David Austin says you could literally take a chainsaw to your top of your roses. I mean, if you've got 3,000, you can't be that precious. I've got you? three. Yeah. We'll, we'll do them together, I promise. Wasn't David Austin the six million dollar man? Steve Austin. Oh, yeah. Two Didn't... very different things. <laughs> do you think they were related? <laughs> <laughs> Two very, very different things. <laughs> I remember my brothers were obsessed with squashing an orange. Do you remember in the opening, <laughs> in the opening credits? They would go, we can rebuild him. And it was this, ah, 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 I'm doing the noise. And he would squeeze an orange and it would break in his hand. That's not uh, hard, is it? Well, orange? we were very impressed at the time. We were young. <laughs> and I can remember my brothers getting an orange and going, hey. it was like, really, it was like, oh, if I could break this orange, I'll be as good as Steve Austin. <laughs> and tearing up the yellow pages. Was that a thing? The, do you remember? Orinoco, not Orinoco. What was his name? He used to bend a spoon. 
Orinoco. No, that was no. a womble. No, Orinoco. Was Orinoco, a womble. the spoon. What was bender. the? Who was the? Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller. Yes. Was he a real? Was that real? No, oh, I don't think so, Did Jenny. You think that was Otherwise, real? we'd all be doing it, wouldn't we? Well, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd be fuming. Well, I'd be fuming. I've literally just got back from Ikea. Someone comes around, you give them a cup of char and they start wafting on your spoon with their fingers. Next thing, you've got no... You're back down Ikea again and parking is never easy. No. That would drive me crazy. Do you know, there's one thing I've never done. Gone to Ikea? <laughs> I've been, no, I've only ever been to Ikea twice. What? That was when Joel moved out. We bought some Ikea furniture for him. And when Benjamin went to university... We bought some Ikea that I have Sorry. never, ever been, I'm just, apart from twice. I'm having a moment. And, but, and I've never had a Swedish meatball there. I, I can't comment on that because being a vegetarian. But um, are you, I, I don't know what to say to you. It's like I don't know you at all. Never. I mean, I can't bear the place. I'm told which way to walk, where to go. I hate it. Penny, I go so often I know all the shortcuts. Oh, you need to take me. Well, I mean, I, I don't know whether I could cope. Where do you buy all your fancy ice moulds from? Ice moulds? You know, for your, for your ice cubes that go in the freezer. They do novelty ice cube shapes. What, different to squares? Yeah, I've got crosses, I've got hearts, I've got jigsaw pieces. They go down well. I've got, uh, I've got all kinds of pen. God, what, why? Why? Where why? do you buy your tea lights, your scented tea lights? Um, St Evel. Oh, fancy, you see. Well, because I don't, I don't use them that often because um, my other half thinks they're a bit of a fire risk. Yeah, they probably are the IKEA ones even more so, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> oh, you no, say that? I love all the tut, all the all the old tut you get in IKEA. I Apparently, buy it you can get really good vases from IKEA. That nearly yeah. persuaded me to go. Vases, plants. Bathroom stands, laundry baskets. I'm just going to sit and list everything <laughs> IKEA sell: plates, crockery. If they had a catalogue, they do. You, d- d- oh, d- for you, are you having a laugh? No. Do but, they really have a catalogue? Penny, I, honestly, I'm going to take you in hand. You see, you laugh at me and my lack of rose knowledge, but I know everything about IKEA and you don't, so I feel superior right now. Oh well, I'm, I mean, yeah, but if I went, I'd just want to go home. <laughs> I'd make it fun. Really? Exeter is the best Ikea, in my opinion. Really? And I know it's controversial, but I love an Exeter Ikea. Yeah, it's massive, it's beautiful. So Lovely what, restaurant. I'm just trying to think what I would want to buy. I can't that's, imagine. Yeah, that's the thing. Don't think about it. It's You don't ever go to Ikea with a plan, or you think you've got a plan, but they're cleverer than you. Yeah, because they send you where they want you to go, which exactly. is really annoying. I mean, we never leave Ikea without buying a very large packet of napkins... Obviously, paper napkins for 2p50. And then you buy your bag of chocolate dime bars, a mini, and they say dime, which makes them even more fancy because it's like foreign dime. Love that. Um, And then we have an ice cream or a hot dog at the end. The hot dog is actually probably about 8% meat, I'm sure. Well, I mean, this is all everybody says to me is that, oh, my gosh, have you never had IKEA Swedish meatballs? Yeah, well, do you know what, Pen? I think we should rectify this gap in your knowledge. Really? You'd love it. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, how how soon would be too soon to say I've had enough? Um, I think you need to. But then it... you have to go all the way, don't you? you oh can't... no, oh, my no. Gosh. This is this isn't always the case. There are some shortcuts. Are there? Yeah. What out through the back of a cupboard? No, stick with me. It's like Narnia. <laughs> you go through the wardrobe and literally. You're not... and it, so I'm not allowed to cross over the top of the beds or anything like that. No, that'd be too high for you with your fear of bridges. But honestly, <laughs> it is. It's a fantastic day out. IKEA, a good IKEA lunch. I just like to bimble around the room sets because they have these rooms. Some of them are really tiny. And I think, this is so perfect. It makes me want to move into a shed. <laughs> I do. I think, oh, all that lack of cleaning. Yeah, but there wouldn't, yeah, but there, there would be a lot of cleaning because if, if it was a shed, I'd have to keep my tools in it. You would. That's yes. very true. You could have a, maybe a, a portable. See, this is the thing. They do garden stuff. See, uh, now you're well interested. Vases. Yep, vases, uh, plants, everything. It's it's an education. I'll take you to IKEA. I think Robert might leave if I if I buy any more vases. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you have off the top of your head? Oh well, I've, I know for a fact I have two hundred bud vases that I use up and down trestle tables for weddings. So I've got two hundred of those. I've probably got at least fifty glass vases of various sizes. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, you just never know when you need one. Yeah, but you're never going to run out of one, are you? You've got that many. Can I just say, in weeks past, I bring you flowers and I'm rootling around in your cupboards trying to find a vase. I know. You need more vases in your life. Well, today you found... Well, was it today or was it last week? I can't remember you came in and you found that lovely jug. Yes. 
and just make plucked brick. it from the shelf and it was beautiful. Yeah, teapots, coffee pots. Um, actually, I've just spied a, a, a champagne cooler thing, wine cooler. I do have a champagne cooler. I have several things like they that. They make wonderful uh, vases. And do you they? Can, yeah, all you have to do, people go, oh, yeah, but they're too big. All you have to do is you get um, a piece of chicken wire. And Which you, I have laying around. Yeah, well, you know, most people, you you can just buy a little bit of chicken wire or, yeah, most people have some wire in the house, don't they? This comes from a woman who has a potato cupboard, so... <laughs> and you make it into a big ball. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> choke when we're recording. Wait till we've finished. Because <coughs> I can't Heimlich you across the table. <laughs> um, and then you make the the wire into a ball, stick it in the bottom Helicopter. of the wire. Helicopter. Oh, we've got it all going on today, Pen. <laughs> oh, no, it's a plane. That's We're done. police We're helicopter. <laughs> oh, wow. House. They're going, last week, reports of a woman in Tesco with a large knife. <laughs> For anyone that listened to the episode. Um, put it into the bottom of your wine cooler, mm-hmm. and then that's what holds the stems up. Oh, OK. So do you ever use that stuff that my nan used to have loads Ooh. of? Oh, how long have we got? Oasis. Listeners? Is it Oasis? Yes. Floral not foam. Not the group. No. No. We're not it's a bit like Hoover's and vacuum cleaners. Oh, I see. Hoover is that was originally the sort of trade name, wasn't it? I think we know that. Um, Oasis makes floral foam. I did not know that. Okay. So uh, floral foam is a very, very bad thing. Is it? It's incredibly bad for the environment. <gasps> um there is um a lot of us in the last Probably, I'd say for me, 10 years or so, um, we do not use floral foam if we can possibly help it. When you say us, you sound like I you're mean, in kind of yeah, floral sorry. gang collective massive. Yeah, um, there's um, a very interesting uh, Instagram page called At Sustainable Flowers. Oh. And it's all about going back to the old-fashioned ways of arranging flowers. Oh, lovely. Because really, in the 50s, this oasis appeared... And all the church ladies used to use yes. it. Everybody used to use it. And what they don't tell us in this country, but they do in a lot of other countries, is how toxic it is and the fact that it never, ever decomposes. You're kidding. Never. That's awful, Penny. So think of all those wonderful funeral arrangements yeah, that course. people make. Do um, they still use it then? Most good florists will not use floral foam anymore. Right. But I do, I'm, and I'm not getting on my uh, soapbox here. You are a little bit. I am a little bit, yeah. sorry. You've got one uh, foot on. But I, I do understand that if you are a florist and you have a shop or you have um, a business whereby you have to use it, I fully accept you've got to pay your bills. It, there may be occasions when you have to use it. Mm. But given the choice... And people need to know that yeah. they shouldn't use this product. And request not to use it properly because yeah. it's that harmful for yeah. the environment. We it's, don't want that. Exactly. Mm. So now you can make the most wonderful funeral arrangements by having, we're going to use that word again, a sheaf. A sheaf. A sheaf of beautiful locally grown flowers. Oh, um, my God. That's, that, is, that is dog snoring. The, I mean, uh, Penny. Uh, so you can use these instead of using Oasis because if you imagine... You've had your funeral and people leave um, these floral arrangements, don't they? On the grave or at the crematorium or wherever. Apparently the crematoriums actually have to pay to get rid of floral foam. Really? Because of the fact that it doesn't decompose. Wow. Um, so if you've got the opportunity to ask, mm. but this is another thing. We were talking about funerals, weren't we? We were, day? yeah, I liked that episode. Um, it was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, because when you're in that state of grief... And you're at the funeral director and you have shoved under your nose a book of floral arrangements that you can choose. Does that happen? I don't know how it works, really. It does happen, apparently. Um, You can actually ask, I would love to have some local local flowers. Mm. Or Um, no flowers. I think flowers really help comfort a family at a time because they are beautiful. Mm. They do look lovely. And most people that do funeral flowers... um, a lot of the flower growers I know, a lot of the florists will do funeral flowers using seasonal local flowers. And I think that's even more special. It is, but I you know how I feel. Is. I feel very, very strongly about the exorbitant costs of funeral at a time when you are most vulnerable. I hate so much that people are, you know, when people lose people, it is absolutely, it's life-changing, it's traumatising, 
And then you've got, you know, this is huge bill that comes yeah. from nowhere. It yeah. doesn't have to, no. but a lot of people feel pressurised by it. I yeah. absolutely can't stand it, you know, to have the shiniest casket and the biggest display. And, that. and I'm thinking, just don't do any of that. Just do what's right for the person you loved and it's fine. You don't need all of that. You don't even need a funeral, which I've already said before. You know, you can just have a simple ceremony at home, you know, that the council can actually get rid of your loved ones and get rid of, can give your <laughs> loved ones a send-off and you can celebrate them in any which way yeah. you want. Don't feel obligated for this huge, you know, often debt-inducing event. It's mm. terrible, really. Well, I, I've been actually asked to do flowers for somebody using flowers from their garden. That's beautiful. I love and that. And I thought that was a lovely idea. Yeah, I love um, that. So if you possibly can, do not use floral foam. No, that's the message, And choose yeah. a florist that doesn't use it or that you can ask, please, can you just use the old-fashioned... Um, you probably used to have a cupboard in the back that used to have little frogs in it. <laughs> a frog <laughs> is like a little spiky thing that you put in the bottom of a vase oh. and would hold flowers up. Right. Very old-fashioned. Mm. And now you cannot get them in charity shops because all the florists are going around buying them up. I don't know what they are. Uh, they're like a little spiky, weighted piece of metal right. that you... Use and use and use, and this is why they, you know, they're fantastic. Mm. And you can buy them and put them into any receptacle, any vessel, and make it into a, a vessel for flower arranging. I did not know that then. Chicken wire, we use lots of chicken mm. wire. You can do any arrangement now not using floral foam. I love it. So love please, that. if you've got the opportunity, ask to have them done without floral foam. So what song, what one song would you have at your funeral? Oh, that's interesting. We talked about that, didn't we? Did. We did, we touched yeah. on it. Um, um, oh, you really put me on the spot. Probably Fleetwood Mac for you. Oh, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. But then I'm very aware of the fact that I've been to funerals and they've put on a sad song and it's made me sadder. I totally. And that's quite sad. Although it's quite nice to get the release sometimes. You know, it's all pent up and you arrive. In fact, we, we went to funeral a couple of weeks ago. My lovely friend passed away. And uh, they had a version of The Sound of Silence playing, the Simon and Garfunkel song, which is obviously quite emotive and beautiful anyway. Mm. And I was determined not to cry. I thought, no, nope, I'm not going to yeah. cry. I'm going to be fine. I'll cry in the car on the way there and on the way back, and that's great. And they played that, and it was just like, it's like turning on a tap, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. But music does that, doesn't it? Music is... Very evocative. The most evocative. Do you listen to music all the time or during the day? or? Um, no, I don't, actually. I, 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 I mean, I do... I, I will have the radio on in the background. Um, I don't listen to plays, playlists very often. Um, I do like music. Mm. I love to sing. <laughs> God help I love all. to sing. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing worse than when you've got your ear pods in and you're singing along. For everyone else. And it sounds absolutely dreadful to everyone else. See, that's the thing. When I've got my earphones in, I think I sound like Madonna. <laughs> it's only other people who are going, do. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Is that what you listen to then, Madonna? Well... It's funny, music has the ability to change my mood like nothing else. Mm. For some people it's food or it might be a scented candle or it could be touching something green as it is for you. For me, music is the single thing that I can literally, I can be feeling low or down or thoughtful or whatever, put some music on and I am lifted. I, it really carries me with it. So I tend to listen to an awful lot of 80s music, you know, from when I was a teenager, Depeche Mode, Duran Duran, everything you'd expect. Um, ABC, but Lex can I love, why not? <laughs> um, love all of that. And it takes me back to that time in my life. And I see myself as a 16 year old, you know, bopping with my friends and friend, I need one. Um, in fact, I've written a book called Waiting to Begin. And it's a book set in, uh, Bessie is my heroine in that book. And it's set in two days in her life, her 16th birthday and her 53rd birthday, I think. And at 16, she is vibrant and outgoing. You know that, that energy you have when you're 16 and you really think you can change the world and do anything. And then at 53, life hasn't quite delivered. You know, she feels jaded. She feels tired. She's not particularly happy in her marriage. She has a lot of shame, a lot of regret. You know, she was quite sexually adventurous as a 16-year-old. Uh, as a 53-year-old, she can't be asked. Um, and she, I, there's a, one scene particularly where she plays soft cell, tainted love, as an adult, and she is taken right back to those discos in a hut or a school hall or, you know, youth club. And I pull on that directly from my own experience because that's exactly what it does for me. So I listen to a lot of 80s music, but actually I love any music. 
Sometimes I listen to classical music. I know. I know. I, I do like listening to a bit of classical music, but mm. now you're saying that, I realise that when I go to music, it's quite often music that's a bit sort of chill. Yeah. If I do put on a playlist, it will be chill acoustic. Chill acoustic? Yes. I love that. Yeah. I don't very often... I mean, I, you know, I do like a bit of a bop every now and then, mm-hmm. but I can confirm. It's very, yeah, it's very. It it doesn't. Uh, I want to say I almost want to listen to words rather than music, and yet I love music. Don't get me wrong. So you're more likely to listen to what uh, a play, an audio book, or a podcast? Yeah, yeah totally. I, I have that in the background. Mm. Um, almost, I need to have that noise going on. Yeah. Um, I love it when I'm out in the garden picking, the birds are singing, you know. Flowers, not nose, we should point out. Yes. <laughs> Having a little pick. We all do that, Pen, we're on our own, don't worry. We were talking about picking feet the other day. Oh, well. you were, and it still makes my stomach roll. Honestly, I can't cope. It's horrible. Um, but I, I, quite often I don't. I don't listen to music. See, I have it on nearly all the time, especially in the car. I have music in the car and I sing my heart out. And very mm. often you, you're in a traffic jam and you just look to the guy and you left and you think, oh, gosh, I was really have singing you, them. Have you ever, this is this has only ever happened to me once, have you ever been in the car, pulled up to a traffic light and both been singing the same thing? No, but I have pulled up at a traffic light and we've both been laughing at Steve Wright. Oh. And I remember that very clearly. It was, he had one of his, his yonks ago, and I can't remember, it might have been one of his characters, it might have been Gervais, I can't remember, but some, he was doing a sketch and yeah. someone was talking and I was howling and I just looked to my right and there was a woman in the car and we were both, and we, we both knew that yeah. Steve Wright had us in floods. That was very sad, wasn't it, recently? That was my whole sort of, the children growing up. All of us. Being at the, every Everyone. afternoon. Yeah. And then in the mornings. Yeah. And then in the afternoons. Yeah. And it, it Made you realise that actually the radio being on in the background, you yeah. don't really think about it, do you? There's some there's some people that when they pass away, you think, oh, I thought they'd already passed away. <laughs> being quite honest, you know, it could be an old movie star. You think, oh, I didn't even know they were still alive. Steve Wright was a sort of integral part of all of our lives. We've grown up with him. At this age, yeah. In our age, mm. definitely. Um, it's the background music to our lives. Yeah. And, and the music he chose was the music we wanted to listen to. And he formed that and he shaped it. He was a very significant part of all of our listening. Um, and I think we all felt strangely affected by it. I know I did. Really, I really, really did. Really did. Um, I remember when Joel first was invited to go on Steve Wright and it was such a mega big thing for me. Yeah. And I said to Joel, you don't understand how huge this is. Exactly. I've listened to this man yeah. every morning every afternoon yeah. for most of my adult life yeah. and now suddenly you're on it talking to him I was very lucky to I did get to meet him I was very very lucky I was doing a show with Sarah Cox and I met Steve Wright and he was it what's weird is when you see the person with the voice coming out yes, that you know the voice and it's like, like oh you know yeah. I, I did but it was really because I'd watched one tour of the pops but it was really sort of it was that moment and quite yeah I won't forget it it's a couple of yeah. people like that isn't it that yeah. sort of had that effect totally do you think he knew I hope he knew how loved he was I don't, I don't know I don't know I think um surely he must have I hope so he must have. I, I hope so, because he really was. He really was. I mean, all the accolades from everyone who worked with him, I yeah. know that they were just saying uh, that no one had... I mean, the thing is, it, it, silence often speaks very loudly, doesn't it? Mm. And when someone passes away and people don't really say much or they say, you know, thinking of their friends and their family, it's always quite telling. But the messages that came in when he died, you know, from everyone at the BBC who were saying he was a mentor, he was a friend, mm. he was this, it's, it was very heartfelt. And he was there for them. Yeah. Yeah. Very, but very telling. if only he'd known that he was there for so many average, ordinary people. Yeah, too, too. I hope so. Yes. Is there any music you hate, Pen? Anything you can't listen to? Um... I'm not very good at the modern stuff. Ravey, ravey, boom, boom. Yeah, ravey, ravey, boom, boom. No, definitely not very good at that. Um, and I never like. See, was getting down to a bit of techno pen <laughs> with your whistle. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not really good with any of that. I think Aren't it's I boring. Do you know? No, I think it's a sign of age. So I remember v- vividly, and I'm sure you will too. When someone, your dad, your, you know, someone older than you said, well, I don't understand the word they're saying. It all sounds the same. And I thought, what? Every song is so distinct. You're just old. 
And then I actually heard myself thinking that a few a few years ago, thinking, oh, I'm at that point then, where I just literally can't make out the words. What? Don't you know the words of Rizzle Kicks? Oh, yeah, but that's that's kind of commercially in tame, isn't it? I'm talking about Ravy Ravy Boom Boom, though I don't really understand yeah, it. No. But also, I love a bit of country. <gasps> yes, oh, I do too. Pen. Yeah, you can. Please don't start singing the Beyonce thing again. I only once know I the one word. You, once I got you, woo! Onto, yeah, once I got you onto it, and then she won't stop going woo every two <laughs> seconds. Every two seconds. I love a bit of country. I love Johnny Cash. Oh yes, oh, oh, I used to love that. Yeah, Glen I, Campbell. I think Glen Campbell has the most beautiful voice. Yes, love it. Um, what's the famous one? Wichita Line Man. Yes. That's stunning. very sad, isn't it? Stunning, stunning yeah. song. But that makes me cry if I hear it. Oh, really? But I love it. That's what I won't sing it then. That'll Please make don't. You cry. It would anyway. <laughs> just your singing. Um, so, do you have a karaoke go to? Um, I have a confession. Oh my I god! Have... Oh, it's not another IKEA moment, is it? Um, I have never ever been to a karaoke, and I have never sung a karaoke song. I just need to. We just need a moment <laughs> of silent reflection. Your face. Your face is a picture. What, you've never been, like, in the dog and duck after four pints of Guinness? <laughs> never. They put the jukebox on and you all get up and have a little sing song. Oh, I've, not, I've been down the cricket club and we all sing, you know, <laughs> um, Sweet Caroline, yes. Yeah, that might been be your that, go-to then. Yes, but that's with lots of other people singing at the same time. Yeah, not karaoke then, is it? It's just a choir. Yeah, well, I belong to the... Well, I used to belong to the village choir. They didn't throw me out. Of that doesn't so surprise much. me. Yeah. I think you live in Midsummer Murders. <laughs> I think, actually... I do murder a few songs in my time, that's for sure. Um, but, yes, I've, I've never done karaoke, ever. But you'd love it. It's so funny. Is it? Yeah, if you can sing, it's Yeah, but not people funny. are laughing at you. Yeah, but that's what's funny. It's like, if you, you know, if you actually are good at singing, then it's a whole different thing. People sort of that's stop. That's a show. The, that's, <laughs> it's when people are really toilet, that's when it's brilliant. <laughs> and I am one of those peoples. I am so bad. <laughs> Or pen. So that's two things we need to do. We need to get you up Ikea <laughs> and we need to get you up the karaoke. I, t- I think I would... I mean, people Not on think the same I'm, day. People think I'm I'm an extrovert, but actually, do you know what? I don't I don't know whether I could do that. No. See, I'm not an extrovert. I am, I am confidently shy. <laughs> Passively <laughs> shy. <laughs> I do feel shy a lot of the time and then I present as more confident than I am. Yeah. However, when I'm talking about my job, my writing, I'm extremely confident. Yes. Because I know it. Yeah, but everything else I'm a bit... Mm. Well, I think that takes a very different person that doesn't really care about, you know, how they're perceived. Yeah, I'd like to be a bit more like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think as you get older, you start not really caring yeah. what people think about you. Yeah, totally. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, get me on gardening and I'll talk for hours, bore you to death. We know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, but it's something I feel comfortable talking about. Yeah, definitely. And you are an expert and very good at it too. Oh, you're so kind. Pen, can you believe it? We have come to the end of another glorious episode. And I would just like to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Keep an eye out for our next episode, which drops every Friday, as I'm sure you know by now, from wherever you get your podcasts. Tell your friends, follow us. Keep up to date on our Insta page, which is... At the Chit Chatters. And we would like to thank Mason Wilkins, our glorious producer, who puts up with far more than most people have to, Pen. He has to do so much taking out of noises. De-snorting. <laughs> yeah. I think he spends most of his time getting rid of de-snorting. I don't think he can do much with the snoring this week, no, actually. No, there was a lot of snoring. We apologise in advance, but Frenchie's gonna French. Thank you, Mason. Thank you, Mason. So until next time, take care. <laughs>